Hey there gang and welcome to your very first HTMX lesson. Okay then gang, so in this series you're going to learn all about HTMX from the ground up and how to make web applications using it. And if you've never used HTMX before, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. It's incredibly fun to work with and it just feels really intuitive when you're building applications with it. It kind of feels how HTML should have been to begin with. But first of all, what exactly is HTMX and how is it different from other technologies like React, Vue, Svelte, etc.? Well, first of all, HTMX is a JavaScript library that allows us to make dynamic web applications. And at the core of HTMX is the idea of building those web applications using a hypermedia driven approach. And by that, I mean the exchange of hypermedia between the browser and server using HTTP to control the UI and functionality of an application. Now, HTML itself is a hypermedia, or at least it's a language that includes a set of hypermedia controls like hyperlinks and forms. And those hypermedia controls add functionality to HTML documents through attributes like href on a link or the action attribute on a form. And in turn, those controls allow for interactions between the browser and the server. For example, when we click a link on a website, that initiates a GET request to the URL within the href attributes. That GET request is sent to the server, and then the server responds with a hypermedia response, a new HTML document, which then replaces the entire current HTML in the browser. And this is the transfer of hypermedia in action. We've used a hypermedia control, an anchor tag, to request a new HTML document that gets sent to the browser to update what we see in it. Another example would be the form elements. When we submit a form, we initialize an HTTP request to the URL outlined in the action attribute, and the request method is outlined in the method attribute, for example, a post request. When that post request gets sent to the server, it also includes any values entered into the input fields within that form. And the server can then access that data and respond by sending back a new HTML document to replace the current one in the browser. Again, this demonstrates the transfer of hypermedia between the server and the client. And when we use HTMX, we're embracing this idea of hypermedia controls to interact with the server. And the transfer of hypermedia HTML from server to client to update the UI. Now on its own, HTML doesn't contain a great deal of hypermedia controls that we can use to interact with the server, aside from anchor tags and forms. But when we use the HTMX library, it extends that model so that pretty much any HTML element can become a hypermedia control, which can interact with the server. And HTMX does that by providing additional attributes we can apply to HTML elements to do things like trigger HTTP requests. For example, we could assign an HX get attribute to a button which sends a get request to this URL when it's clicked. And it would do that without the need for us to write any additional client side JavaScript. Now, really importantly, when we respond to those requests from the back end, HTMX wants us to send back a hypermedia response. That is HTML and not JSON as we would from a typical data API. Then the HTMX library takes that HTML response and it swaps it into the current HTML document in the browser at a location of our choosing by using an HX target attribute. So in this simple example, you can see how HTMX takes the idea of hypermedia controls and HTML responses and it just runs with it to make a dynamic and interactive web page. To that end, HTMX is kind of like HTML on steroids and it probably lays out the blueprint of what HTML could be alone in the future. So for the majority of this series then, I assume only prior knowledge in HTML. However, because we'll be making network requests to a backend, it would also be beneficial to know about different HTTP methods like get requests, post requests, delete requests, and put requests. It would also be very beneficial if you understand the basic concepts of what an API is and how to handle requests to an API endpoint and send responses, because we'll be doing that to send HTML responses back to the browser. We'll be using Node and Express to make that API in this series, so to follow along exactly with me, a knowledge of those things would be highly beneficial as well. However, if you prefer to use some other language or framework for the backend, like Python or Go, then that's completely fine. HTMX doesn't care what language or framework we use on the backend, only that we can handle requests and send HTML responses. So then, in this series, we'll be using HTMX to make a simple reading list application that looks something like this, where we can add new books using the form at the bottom of the page, which then get added to the list when we submit. 
We can delete books by clicking on the delete button next to one of them, and we can also edit any of the books by clicking on them. This replaces the book content with a form, which we can use to change the author and the title, and then save it by clicking on the confirm button. And all of this functionality and dynamic content swapping was managed using HTMX attributes and virtually no front-end JavaScript at all. In fact, the only place we use an extra line of JavaScript is to reset the form once it's been submitted. And that's fine, by the way, you can use JavaScript on the front-end to complement the features HTMX gives to us if you want to. Okay, so like I mentioned before, we'll be using Node and Express to make the backend API for the websites. And to that end, if you want to follow along with me, you'll need Node.js installed on your computer. You can download and install that by going to Node.js.org and clicking this button right here. Also, I've created course files for every single lesson in the series, and you can find them on this GitHub repo right here. So I'll leave the link to this down below the video as well. So each lesson has its own branch in this repo. And to get the code for a specific lesson, you just need to select that lesson from the branch dropdown and then click on the code button to download a zip folder of all the code for that lesson. So then that's your introduction to HTMX. In the next lesson, we'll be setting up a starter project, which is gonna be a simple express application. By the way, if you want to watch this entire course now without YouTube adverts, you can do. It's all up on the NetNinja website, netninja.dev. You can buy the course for $2 to get instant access to all of it, or you can sign up to NetNinja Pro and get instant access to all of my courses without adverts, as well as premium courses not found on YouTube, including my Udemy ones. That's $9 a month, and you can get your first month half price when you use this promo code right here. So I'm going to leave this link down below in the video description for you to sign up. And I really hope you enjoy this series, and please do not forget to share, subscribe, and like the videos. That really helps a lot, and I'm going to see you in the very next lesson.